Hi friends, brothers and sisters, my name is Ayana Dalangin and welcome to Pathways of Hope. Today's gospel is from Matthew 10, verse 34 to chapter 11, verse 1. Well, this gospel might be baffling for some. Jesus, the same guy who preaches love and mercy, shows his fiery zeal and firmness. Without sugarcoating or watering down the truth, he says, Whoever loves mother or father more than me is not worthy of me. Of course, he is not saying, do not love your father and mother. It is not the act of loving the other that he challenges, but rather to make an examine of our hierarchy of loves. The key word here is the word more, meaning over, beyond, extra, an adverb that connotes a greater degree. And Jesus uses the example of parental love as a representation of perhaps one of the strongest form of attachment we can ever have. But we also know that there are many other people and things we could attach ourselves to, right? It forces us to reflect upon our inordinate attachments, take it to heart and make a quick examination of conscience. Who do I love the most? Is there anything or anyone I have loved, attached myself to, or relied myself upon more than God himself? I read a book before, and the author wrote, If there is anything or anyone that you earnestly desire, it could be a state of life, an achievement, material possession, anything with which you consciously or unconsciously say, If I only have that, my life would be better. Then, You have made that an idol or false god. It has taken the place of God to be your utmost and highest, him who should be your savior portion and source of joy. Ironically, putting God first puts order to other loves and priorities. Loving him teaches us to love others well. Let me share to you something personal. When I was a fresh grad from college, I discerned about the calling to be a full-time missionary. But I had a big dilemma. I'm an only child and my dad was sick. I remember wrestling with my call to mission and responsibility to contribute financially. But the Lord's invitation was very clear. He said, I know you love your family, but remember, I have loved them first and I love them most. Take care of my family and I will take care of your family. And God did. He so generously blessed my family with whatever we needed for my dad's medication until he passed in 2018 and even our other needs as I responded to mission. Fast forward to 2023, I have long been anticipating my June to August to be my busiest. I'm traveling to different places and participating in national and international conferences, many of which I am also serving. And in the middle of everything, my mom got badly ill. While on a mission trip, I suddenly felt a thug in my heart and an invitation from the Holy Spirit. If you want to change the world, go home and love your family. Well, I was really, really worried about my mom's health. But if I could also be candid, I was also slightly concerned with my schedule. I simply don't have a window to come home. I examined my heart and noticed my attachment towards my own plans and schedules. After much discernment and practical consideration, I had to drop some things and actually come home and been given the opportunity, a blessing to actually serve her. Now, a few days into taking care of my mom, I slowly started feeling very comfortable at home. I just wanted to stay with her. It does help manage anxieties too hers and mine. But at this point, I now feel the nudging of the Holy Spirit blow towards the direction of mission. He showed me that my mom has help even when I leave, and he has given me an open door to do the things I had committed to. But there's nothing like going to every doctor's visit, practically managing her needs in the day-to-day, right? But this is my reality, and actually part of my service is World Youth Day, in Europe and I'm actually leaving in a few days time. So what do I do? When all is said and done, when due diligence and practical wisdom has been exercised, I rest my case 
in the hands of him who is sovereign and loving. I entrust my mom to him and remember that he is God and I am not. That she loved her first, that he loved her first and he loved her most. And even use this situation to purify my heart and check if God really is first in my life. If he is seated at the throne room in my heart, not my family, not my own schedule, not my own will. Don't be afraid to love God because when you do, he will also just tell you to love others well. For loving God first and loving him most will put in proper order all your other loves. If you have been blessed by this short reflection, please like and share Pathways of Hope and share it to a friend. Once again, this is Ayana Delangin. Have a good day.